A very good evening. Welcome to the State of Business on our television. I'm Sachin Ratnayaka. Let's look at the headlines first. Region must work together to revive the economy. President tells at Indian Ocean Conference. Sri Lankan entity wins the best co-working space in the world at the Global Startup Awards 2021. News in detail. President Gotabe Rajapaksha emphasized that everyone in the region should work together to revive the economy after the COVID-19 pandemic situation. President Rajapaksha made these remarks delivering the inaugural address at the Indian Ocean Conference, which held in Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates, last weekend. The first Indian Ocean Conference commenced in 2016 with the objective of discussing issues of common interest and concerns to countries in the Indian Ocean region and to the other countries using the Indian Ocean. The fourth summit was held in Maldives in 2019 and the theme was securing the Indian Ocean region traditional and non-traditional challenges. The theme of IOC 2021 is Ecology, Economy, Epidemic. In his special address to the Forum, Foreign Minister of Oman, Said Badr bin Hamad bin Hamud al buzaidi said President Gotabe Rajapaksha paved the way for a productive discussion that can act as a platform for effective multilateral actions across the Indian Ocean. The President pointed out that developing countries in particular have been very badly impacted by the pandemic and that this can only be achieved through the support provided by richer nations to developing countries. The president said the COVID-19 pandemic will not end until everyone, everywhere is inoculated against the virus and requested the nations with capabilities to provide assistance to underprivileged nations to make their vaccination drives productive. In contrast to the leadership provided by the World Health Organization for the global pandemic response, no world institution has stepped forward to help countries to navigate their economic recovery. Although the pandemic has affected rich and poor countries alike, a disproportionate impact is borne by poor countries. The president pointed out that the economies that are already burdened with external debt obligations are facing hardships. Accordingly, he also suggested it would be greatly appreciated if more action could be taken by wealthy nations as well as multilateral organizations to forgive, restructure, or grant moratoria for the debt payments of poor countries struggling in the wake of the pandemic. One of the Sri Lanka's mostly known co-working spaces, Hatch, was awarded the best co-working space in the world at the Global Startup Awards 2021. The award marks the first time a Sri Lankan or a South Asian organization which has secured a win in this category, marking a momentous milestone for Sri Lanka's startup ecosystem. It is with great pleasure that I announce that Hatch has been awarded the best co-working space in the world by the Global Startup Awards 2021. This is a momentous milestone for Hatch, for Sri Lanka and also South Asia. This is the first time that a Sri Lankan organization has won a global award, has won the global award. Um, and even more significant is that it's the first time that a South Asian organization has won in this category. With 18,000 nominations with, uh, from 124 countries, Hatch was just one nominee. In March this year, Hatch won its category uh, at the regional level and met five world-class organizations at the global level. On reflection of the last three years, um, I remember us benchmarking ourselves against some of these organizations um, as to what we thought great spaces looked like. And so it's our privilege in three short years to have competed alongside them and won at the highest level. Jeevan Nyanam, who is also a co-founder of Hatch, said that with the right conditions and mindset, a high-spirited community, mutually supportive partnerships, and with a whole lot of hard work, anything is possible. He also assured that the Hatch team is looking forward to win the world now, going beyond the SARC region. Winning this award is representing that um, you know, Sri Lanka can be placed on a global stage 
And I, I think, um, you know, that's why I really want to dedicate this to the startup ecosystem, because I think um, we are reflective of the potential of the startup, you know, the Sri Lankan startup ecosystem, and I think there's huge potential here. And I think that's just been validated now on a global stage, and I think um, that's really what's important here. I think everyone needs an opportunity, and I think if we can provide the infrastructure, if we can provide the mentorship, if we can provide the partners to kind of get these startups and entrepreneurs out there, um, they will succeed. And I think um, that's a great thing about kind of Sri Lankan entrepreneurs. They're so resilient, or they have to be so resilient, uh, and I think they'll do well anywhere. And, and, and it's just our job to kind of help them kind of get on the global stage. Well, I think we're ready to kind of go global at a massive scale. So yeah, looking forward to the future. Stay tuned for more news. We'll be right back after a small commercial break. Welcome back to the State of Business. Hatch co-founder Nathan Shivanathan joining with his team said that bringing a global platform for local entrepreneurs has been the forefront of their vision and the award enables them to continue to position Sri Lanka as an entrepreneurial hub globally. Co-founder Nathan also added that the Hatch fosters an inclusive culture that is supportive and agile, innovating new opportunities including creating pathways for underrepresented entrepreneur communities. I think this journey started um, five or six years ago um, in really understanding what Sri Lanka needed and what Sri Lanka needed as a platform to really uh, be at that global level. Um, and as you can see from above you, the inspiration is uh, how do we get uh, entrepreneurs to be uh, effective globally and not just locally. Um, so in order to compete globally, you need to bring global resources, uh, global inspiration, um, and that's what we've done with our, through our platform, uh, through our webinars, uh, through the exposures that we've given these individuals, through the accelerator programs that we've had, uh, the incubator programs we've had, we've given them an opportunity to really connect with the global world. One of the key things and ingredients that we have in Hatch is not just the space, but it's the accelerator, the incubators, the mentors we have, uh, the, the funds that we're starting, um, and the opportunities that we're giving uh, these startups, which they may not get in just any, any other space. Tamil National Alliance parliamentarian A. Sumantiran says that Sri Lanka has given promises to a number of countries regarding the fully implementation of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. TNA MP Sumantiran participating at the Budget Debate 2022 last Saturday said that the promise was not kept so far and new suggestions on the 13th Amendments are being discussed with several parties. Sri Lanka continuously made promises then to India and thereafter to the whole international community about how a new form of governance arrangement would be made. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution was passed consequent to the signing of Indo Lanka Accord, but even at that point in time, it was deemed insufficient. In fact, in uh, November 1987, President Jawadana visited New Delhi and gave in writing that those defects that were identified would be rectified. So this issue was not confined within the country. With the consent of the government of that day, India was invited and an international bilateral treaty was signed that subsists even today. In international law, there is a concept called Pactum Sun Servanda that these agreements cannot be breached. You cannot even cite domestic law to get away from your obligations under international treaties. Tamil National Alliance MP also questioned the government as how they go for a concept like one country, one law, while they have already agreed for a power devolution within the country. He further said that the government always tells the international community 
that it would expand the powers entrusted with the provincial councils via the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, but at the same time speak about a different subject of one country, one law. Successive governments of Sri Lanka have assured the international community that they would deliver and they are yet to deliver. The timing is also important that we did this now because there is a different kind of promise that is being made to the country here domestically. While to the world you say enhanced devolution, we will settle this matter once and for all by enhancing powers of devolution to the periphery. Locally, something else is being said now. A slogan titled One Country, One Law is being projected. Now what does that mean? If one country, one law is to become reality, then there cannot be any legislative power to the provinces. How can provinces exercise meaningful legislative powers if there is going to be one country, one law? If there is going to be one law for the entire country? That is not what is contemplated by devolution of legislative power. As it is in our constitution, there is legislative power devolved to the provinces on some matters exclusively to the provinces and therefore there cannot be one law for the whole country. And the promise to India and to the world has been that you will enhance that power of devolution, that there will be more devolution, that 13th Amendment would be implemented in full, but it doesn't stop there. It says, and building upon it so as to achieve meaningful devolution, conceding thereby that even the 13th Amendment to the Constitution does not give, confer a meaningful scheme of devolution. That you must go beyond that. Stay tuned for stock updates. We'll be right back after another commercial break. Welcome back to the State of Business. Colombo Stock Exchange ended on positive notes today. The All Share Price Index gained 46.09 points to close at 11,034.41 points and the S&P SL20 gained 81.80 points to close at 3,966.37. The turnover was 6.7 billion rupees and over 252 million shares were traded. Coming up next with foreign exchange rates. With that, we wind up today's news. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow with State of Business at the usual time. Until then, take care. Good night.